Hello, my name is Shahriyar Shahriyari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory undergraduate combinatorics based on my book, An Invitation to Combinatorics. The subject of this lecture is combinations of multisets via the inclusion-exclusion principle. So let's get started with a motivating example. Here's a multiset. A multiset is a set, except its elements might be repeated. So um, this set T has three copies of A, four copies of B, and five copies of C. Um, it has three types of elements, but these numbers um, um, have repetition numbers um, on multiplicity, three, four, and five. There are three copies of A. Those copies of A are all identical. Four copies of B, those are all identical. And five copies of C, which are also identical to each other. And what we want to know, for example, is how many sub multisets can we find of this set T of size 10? So I want to pick 10 elements. I want to know how many different ways I can do that. Another way I could say the same thing is that I want to choose 10 elements of T. However, um, elements of T are not all different from each other. Uh, some of them are the same as each other. Um, uh, another vocabulary one uses for these is the number of 10 combinations of T. Um, the problem with saying 10 combinations is that you don't quite know whether or not you're talking about a multiset or, or a set. Um, sub multisets makes that a little bit more clear, but all of these would be the same thing. We can translate this question to different kinds of questions in combinatorics. We like to do that. So for example, one way to um, recast this problem, look at it from a slightly different lens, is to say that I want the number of integer solutions, solutions that are integers, to the equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals 10, with the conditions that x1 is greater or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 3, x2 is between 0 and 4, and x3 is between 0 and 5. x1 is going to be the number of a's that I pick, x2 the number of b's, and x3 the number of c's. And as soon as I have a solution to to this equation, an integer solution, integer solutions for x1, x2, and x3 satisfying the conditions, I've told you how to pick the 10 elements of that sub multisets and vice versa. If you tell me how you want those elements to be picked, you are giving me a, a, a solution uh, to this um, uh, equation, x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals 10 with um, those conditions. So this would be another way of um, recasting the question. We've seen many in previous uh, videos, in other videos, we have seen many combinatorial questions that like to be cast in terms of the number of integer solution and number of integer solutions. We can also um, cast this or look at this from the lens of balls and boxes. So you can say that we have 10 identical balls and three distinct boxes, but these boxes have capacities. The capacities are three, four, and five. In fact, I didn't have to say distinct boxes because since their capacity is different, they are sort of distinct. But um, three distinct boxes with those, and I wanna know how many ways I can place the 10 balls into these boxes making sure that the first box doesn't get more than three, the second box not, doesn't get more than four, and the third box doesn't get more than five. The ten. I, so if you put a ball in the second box, then that means that you're picking uh, one of the second elements, the, one of the Bs. And because the capacity of that box is um, four, you're not never going to say pick more than four. And you have 10 balls, and, and that's what you want. You want to choose 10 things. Those 10 balls are telling you who to choose. Evidently, these... Um, uh, these are different versions of exactly the same problem, and that's what we want to solve in this video. So first of all, there's some cases of this problem, um, I mean, similar kinds of problems, sub-multisets of a multiset that we have already done. So for example, if someone to ask you the number of non-negative integer solutions to x1 plus x2 plus x2 equals s with not any conditions on it, uh, which is the same as saying find the number of s combinations of this multiset, but here the multiset the multi uh, multiplicity numbers or the repetition numbers are infinite. They don't actually have to be infinite. Uh, it's just that they have to be more than S or S or more um, in the sense that when you're picking things, you're never going to run out of one of the elements. In that case, uh, we have seen that in other videos um, that you should look at, um, that the answer is T multi choose S um, and T multi choose S is given by T plus S minus one choose S. Um, so this is a, a subject of um, other videos. Go watch those. If you haven't seen those, you do need to watch those and understand the, um, how to solve the simpler problem before we can, we can answer a, qu a question about multisets where uh, there is restrictions on how many elements of each type we have. So if you don't have any restrictions, you can pick as many of type one element as you want, type two element we want. We have done this previously. And, and the answer is 
T multitudes S. Another said time when we have done this is when we have multiplicity numbers equals one, repetition numbers equals one. So number of S combinations of a set, or I just have one copy of V1, one, one copy of V2, and one copy of V3. That's the same as saying I want the number of integer solutions to X1 plus X2 plus XT equals S, but XS uh, equals S, XT equals S, but I want each one of XI to be either zero or one. Um, so I'm either picking them or not picking them. And this is clearly just going to be T choose S because you have T objects and all you have to do is figure out which S you wanna pick. So these two are um, um, special cases of what we want to discuss today, uh, which is um, uh, finding an S combination of a multiset where, where uh, there's res the restrictions aren't that uh, the uh, repetition numbers are all one, or all very large, and they can be anything. Of course, this is gonna be a more complicated um, situation and will encompass the ones we have done before. And the answer is not gonna be as nice as these. It's not gonna be just a, a nice little formula that you, you can plug in. Um, what we are going to do is we're gonna use the inclusion exclusion um, principle. And I wanna remind you of that. Ex inclusion exclusion is a subject of another video that I would urge you to watch. Again, if you haven't watched that, that's the prerequisite uh, for, 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 for understanding this uh, video. So if S is a set and you have a bunch of subsets of it, M subsets of it, A1, A2, and AM are subsets of S, and you want to find um, A1, the size of A1 complement intersection, A2 complement intersection, AM complement. Think of A1 as all those elements that have certain property and A2 certain another property and AM certain property. And there might be overlaps in terms of those properties. Some elements might have three or four of these properties or none of them. And what you want is the number of elements that have none of the properties, none are, are in none of these sets. And the inclusion exclusion principle tells us, we'll start with S, that's everything, but that's too much. Then throw away all the things you don't want, which is the size of, um, a1, the size of A2, the size of A3, those are elements you don't want, but by do so doing, you have over thrown out too much uh, because for example, something that was both in A1 and A2 was thrown out twice, uh, whereas it should have been thrown out once. And so you need to put that back. So we put all the um, intersections of two things back in, but, but now we have put in back in too much because if something was in three sets, then we have put, put back in uh, three times and, and we should not have done that. And so we, we have to take away um, all the intersections of uh, three pairs of uh, three sets of um, distinct uh, A's at the sizes of those, size of those intersections and so on all the way till the end. Um, again, the proof of this is in, a, in another video and we discuss that in, 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 in some detail and give examples. Um, for this video, I'm assuming we know this. So just to make sure that we know what these summations are, the first sum is so, over all subsets of size one of one true M. So there's an element, um, there is there is a sum and here for each subset of size one. There's an A1, A2, A3, AM. And but but for the second one, um, there is one element for there's one term for each subset of size two of M. And and for the third one, there is um, um, a, 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 a term for each subset of size three and so on. So there's actually a lot of terms in this. And this is why inclusion exclusion is not usually one of the first places you go to solve a problem uh, because in general, it can be quite messy and then tedious, but sometimes you don't have any choice. And sometimes it sheds lights on things in ways that other methods do not. Okay, so let's go back to our problem. Let's solve that. And in, do, in so doing, you will see how to solve all problems of this type. So again, we have T a multiset, uh, with three types of elements and uh, repetition numbers three, four, and five. And what I want is the number of sub multisets of T of size 10. So what I will start with, the setup is with an inclusion exclusion, you wanna set up what your ambient set, the S, the big set is, and then what are the sets A1, A2 to AM? And usually you set it up so that those are the sets of, that, of elements that you don't want. And so that the thing you do want is the number of elements that are in neither none of those. That's one way of setting it up. So set up here is that we start with, with um, a multiset that we know how to deal with, a multiset with infinite repetition numbers, but the same type of elements. So we call that T star. T star has three types of elements, but infinite number of um, each one of those. And S, our ambient set, is gonna be the set of all sub, sub multisets of size 10 of T star. All the ones we want 
um, the, the, the ones of T, the sub multisets of size T, uh, 10 of T are among these, except some of these are the ones that we can't have because they're using too many A's, too many B's, or too many C's. So we let A1 be um, sub multisets of size 10 of T star with more than three A's, so four or more A's. Uh, and again, that's a, a bunch of um, sub multisets that I shouldn't be counting um, if I count uh, after I count the size S. And if I want to count the size, the sub multisets of, of T of size 10, I should not be counting elements of A1. Likewise, A2 is going to be sub multisets of size 10 of T star with mo more than four Bs, five or more Bs. And A3 is going to be sub multisets of size 10 of T star with more than five Cs. Again, A1, A2, and A3 are the bad elements, the ones we don't want. So what do I want? I want the size of A1 complement intersection, A2 complement, intersection a3 complement and now this is set up for us to use inclusion exclusion i have an ambient set s i have three subset a1 a2 and a3 and i want the size of a1 complement intersection a2 complement intersection a3 complement as soon as i have that then i go and and start doing it so t star is a, a, the, again a sub multiset with infinite repetition numbers and three types of elements and s is the set of all sub multisets of size 10 of t star and A1, A2, and A3 are as we said. And so now let's get our hands dirty and start working. So if, to use the inclusion exclusion principle, I need the size of S. But the size of S is going to be, we already discussed that, is going to be um, three multi choose 10. It's the number of integer solutions to X1 plus X2 plus X3 equals 10, um, where there's no restriction other than X1 and X2 and X3 be non-negative integers. And, and that's a multi choose number. Um, now, what about A1? Well, A1, you want uh, multisets of T star with more than three A's. That means you need at least four A's. Well, take the four A's and, uh, you know, you need four A's, so take them. And then what you need to do is to make, to pick six other elements of T star. And so you want the sub multisets of size six of T star, again, with no other restriction other than non-negative in integer number of them. And that again is the same kind of a problem is um, three multi choose six. Um, so you have three types of elements again in a sub multi set and you wanna pick six of them. Um, and the same with A2. A2 says that you want sub multi sets of T star with five or more. So give five or more Bs. So give those five Bs to um, your multi set. And now, because you want a sub multi set of ten, size 10, you have five more elements to pick from among the three types, but because there's infinite of them, there's no other restriction. And the answer is going to be again three multi choose five. Again, watch the video on um, multi set co combinations of multi sets, co combinations of uh, combinations with repetition, uh, where we discuss this in general. And A3 is going to be three multi choose four again with the same thing. But we also need to find intersections. So, what's the intersection of A1 and A2? Well, that would mean that you want a sub multi set of size 10, but you want at least four A's and at least five B's because we want more than three A's and more than four Bs, so that means four A's and, um, and, and five Bs. And if you do that, and if you give the four and the five um, A's and the Bs, and then you just have to pick one thing, and, and, and that one thing could be A, B, or C. So A1 intersection A2 is actually just three. Um, what about um, A1 intersection um, A3? That means I need more than uh, three A's, I need four A's or more, and I need six C's or more. Well, that's already 10. So I need to pick just four A's and six C's and I don't have much choice. There's only one way to do that. So there's only one element um, in the intersection of A1 and A3 that has both properties of A1 and, and A3. And what about A2 intersection A3 or the intersection of all three of them? That's zero. It's not possible to have a sub multisets of size 10, that, that size 10 of T star that has four A's, five B's or and six C's. That's just too many. I can't have that. And so those are um, all zero. And so now I can apply my inclusion exclusion principle and I can say, uh, write down the inclusion exclusion principle in this case, which says that if you want the number of elements that are in none of the sets, you take the ambient size of the ambient set, you subtract all the bad guys from A1, all the bad guys from A2, all the bad guys from A3, but you have overdone it. So you add in all the um, uh, intersections of pairs of those subsets, but you have um, overdone it again. So you take out um, the intersection of three of them, um, except in this case, the last one is zero. You actually haven't overdone it in that last case. So if you put these numbers in, um, you, you will get this alternating sum. 
So the first one is the size of uh, S. Then you have to subtract the three sizes of A's, and then you add the, the three um, the intersections of two of them, and you subtract the last one, and you get six. And actually, the answer is small enough then it might have been easier to just actually write down um, what all the possibilities are. But this was a proof of concept um, and that masal um, uh, as they say in Persian. Okay, so what's the summary? The summary is that if you have uh, a multi-set with repetition, random repetition numbers, N1, N2 through NT, and um, if you also have, uh, uh, if, if you want to deal with that, and you want to find sub-multisets of that, you usually look at an accompanying multiset that has uh, that has less restrictions. Its restrictions are um, there. There is no restriction. There's infinite number of each one of the uh, types of elements of, uh, on that set. We call that R star. Then what we just showed is that the following integers are equal. If you do any one of these things, you get the same answer. So one of them is that if you want to find the number of S combinations of R, so S is some number, and you want to find you want to choose S elements of R. But given the restrictions that R has, that it doesn't have, uh, you can't, you might not be able to take all um, of the elements to be V1 because there might not be enough V1. There might be, but there might not be. So what am I saying about that? I'm saying that's the same as the number of integer solutions to X1 plus X2 plus XT equals S, which, which each one of the XY having a restriction, X1 is between zero and N1, X2 is between zero and N2, and all the way till XT is between zero and NT. And again, X1 is going to tell you how many V1s you pick. X2 is going to tell you how many V2s you pick. XT is going to tell you how many VTs you pick. And again, finding the number of S combinations is the same as finding the number of integer solutions to this equation with these restrictions. Okay. And that's the same as placing S identical balls in T distinct boxes, but those bo boxes have capacities. The ith box can't get more than NI balls. And we have discussed that these are the same. But we also have now said that this is the same as the size of uh, the intersection of A1 complement, A2 complement, all the way till AT complement, where um, S is the number of the set of S combinations of R star, which we know how to do. And AI is um, a subset of A1, A2 through AT is a, is a subset of uh, S, but which ones? Those ones that have more than NI of VI. So, um, AI, each one of the AI, A1, A2 through AT, are the sets that we of the elements we don't want. And, and the intersection of their complements, the size of that, is exactly what we want. And this last one, this formulation is the one for which uh, we use inclusion, exclusion uh, to, to actually find the answer often, if we can't do it some other, um, some other way. Uh, this is the end of this lecture. If you want to be subject to uh, videos like this on undergraduate mathematics, subscribe to my channel and possibly like this video if you actually liked it. Don't like it if you didn't like it. See you at the next uh, session.